Hey guys, welcome back! We just made some tweaks to our token pair model so that each token contained more data or information that is useful to pass between the application layers. Why don't we get to work on that handler I previously mentioned? Here's the little diagram we've been looking at throughout these tutorials. Today we'll work on the outlined or highlighted components. Notice here in the token service that we have a validate refresh token. This is going to be a method very similar to the validate ID token method below, and that'll just be used for actually verifying the JSON web token that it's valid with the secret string, and then we'll extract the payload from that token as well. We're also going to make some minor updates or tweaks to new pair from user and delete refresh token that will allow us to return an authorization error if the previous token is no longer in Redis. If I were to do this all over again, I might break out some separate methods. I might actually use this validate re uh, refresh token method again. You can see I crossed it out. I don't want to use it. And I was just trying to keep from calling too many methods and making too many accesses to our Redis repository or our actual Redis data source here. But we'll stick with it as it is, and I think this would work in your applications as long as you document what you're doing. With the validate refresh token added and the new pair from user working, we'll then work with our tokens handler here, and you'll be able to make API requests to this endpoint to get an updated access token as well as an updated refresh token. If you recall from long, long ago, we actually revolve our refresh token. So let's say your refresh token has been used and it's a day old. Remember that it's valid for three days. But if you submit that refresh token, you'll get a new access token and your refresh token will now be valid for three days. In fact, it will be a new refresh token. And just to note, this tokens endpoint will also reach out to the user service get because we'll want our token after it's validated, we'll create a new pair from user. But who is this user? Well, we'll get that user to get the most up to date user. So if any of the user's details have changed, we want to make sure that we get all of those sent back through the API to the client. I'm back in the repository now for the account application. And if we go to the model layer here, I want to update the interfaces. Remember, we need to add a validate refresh token method. And this token method will be very similar to what we already have. Here is the signature for validate refresh token. It will take a token string and notice that we're not using the context. And this is similar to what we did for validate ID token. We don't need to reach out to any databases or call other layers and there will be no context cancellation. So we just pass the token string, and what is returned is a model layer refresh token or an error. This refresh token is part of what we updated last time. If we go, I scrolled fast, let's go to tokens.go here. And this will just basically have the sign string, but it will also extract the user ID and the token ID from the refresh token or from the JSON web token and we'll return those as part of a Golang struct here. If I go back to the interfaces file and actually save this, we should get some warnings here for missing implementations. So let's first just add a mock implementation in mocks, and we're working on the token service. So let's go to token service, and we'll add one for not validate ID token, but validate refresh token. Here is the implementation for the mock. Go ahead and take a look at it. I won't dwell on it too long. And let's actually do the application's service layer implementation. Let's go to tokenservice.go. If I scroll to the bottom, you can see that we have a validate ID token method already. We're going to do something very similar for refresh token. And what I mean by that is you can see that we reach out to this tokens utility function, which we have, if you recall, in this tokens.go file. So let's click this and let's scroll down and add a function to validate refresh tokens. Here's the one for the ID token and we're going to do something very similar. 
I'll copy and paste this function. And we'll go over it relatively quickly. I know it's fast and you'll probably have to pause the video, but we can't go on forever. This is a lot of stuff in a single video. What does this do now? All right, it takes the token string and the key. This key will end up coming from our token service. And that is, if I go back, this is not the actual token service. That's the mock. Let's open up our token service file from the service layer. If we scroll to the top, when we initialize a token service, it has a refresh secret, which is just a string version of a secret for the JSON web token, which is used with HMAC, I think it's called. This is, I need to brush up on authentication or authorization. Anywho, we get that key and the string. And so basically this is the function that we need to use with our JWT library that takes the string it takes the a reference to the claims type or an instantiation of that type, which is refresh token custom claims. If we scroll up, let's remind ourselves what that is. It's basically just a UID of type UUID and the standard claims that a JSON web token might contain, like the expiration, the creation, and the ID, which is very important in this case. Scroll back down here. So we parse that and we pass the key, which is the string key in this case, to this sort of validation function that this parse with claims takes. I don't know why it takes this anonymous function. It's a little strange, but something beyond my knowledge there. We check for errors and then very importantly, we make sure the token is valid. If it's not, we'll return an error. And then we parse the claims if everything is well as those refresh token claims we just went over and we return them. We can now use this in the token service.go file or the concrete implementation. So here we are and let's scroll to the bottom and create this method. Here's the validate refresh token method right here. And it takes that token string and returns the model refresh token, which remember is the sign string with the user's ID included and the what else? The token ID, which is just ID here. And they're both have UUID. I did that mainly to clarify that this is a UUID and not just any old string. In some of the methods, I passed a string and we know that that string is the UUID. I could probably up the, it, update those to take a UUID as well. But basically, we call that validate refresh token function. If there's an error, we will return an authorization error saying that we're unable to verify the user. And from that, the token claims actually get the ID of the token. Now, not the user ID, but the token JWT standard claims contain a token on the JTI key. That needs to be parsed as a UUID. So this is kind of what I was talking about earlier that makes it a little tricky. We check for errors. And then finally, we'll return that refresh token with the sign string ID and user ID and nil for error. I mentioned that I wanted to make some tweaks to uh, new pair from user and the delete refresh token methods. Let's open this again. These two methods. If we go to the new pair from user again, let's go back. And we're in the token service and new pair from user. We see that it takes the previous token ID and that is that token ID we just extracted in the verify refresh token method. This function generates or method generates an ID token. It generates a refresh token. And then it reaches out to the actual repository layer to set this new refresh token. And then if the previous ID token isn't an empty string, which it will not be an empty string in this case, it reaches out to delete refresh token. What we want to do to update all this is if we try to delete a refresh token in this block, Redis can actually check when we delete the refresh token if no tokens were deleted. That means that there is no, the refresh token we're trying to use to refresh our tokens is not valid. It's not in our whitelist. Remember that we're using Redis to store valid refresh tokens. So if we try to delete one, and it's not there, we can return an error and then we can pass that error along 
inside of this if check all the way back to the handler layer. Let's go ahead and update the delete refresh token first. So that is in repository and it's in the Redis token repository implementation. They're set and here's delete. Let's make the following changes. Right now we're kind of cascading these calls or whatever term you use to delete the key and then check the error. We can actually extract this operation and then we get more data on the delete method. And I'll show you what I mean here. Let's extract the Redis delete into a result. And then here for the error check, we can actually use the result.error and handle it in the same manner. But on this result, we can actually use a val method to make to check if no tokens were deleted, like so. Here we can use result.val. And you see this returns an int 64 and it returns the number of records or keys that were deleted. And so if it's less than one, meaning nothing was deleted, this is when we're going to return an authorization error. Let's now update our new pair from user. Remember, we want to update this check. And instead of updating this check, let's do this actual check first to make sure we can delete a refresh token. So let's move this up to the top of this method. And I'll add it right here. Again, if there is a previous ID token provided to this method, or it's not an empty string, we're going to try to delete the previous refresh token first. And if it fails, we will return this error. And again, we will now have an error if nothing is deleted. So this is a way to create a new pair and check that there was a previous refresh token. You probably want to comment this a little better than I did because it isn't necessarily intuitive. And as I said, if I did this again, I might break it out into different functions or methods to make it clear what the logic is. Now we're ready to start working on the tokens handler. So let's go up to our handler folder here and let's create a new file called tokens.go. And of course this will be in package handler. And let's then go to our handler file here, which has a lot of our handler set up. And we currently just have a simple, actually this is the definition of the method we want to use, but we have a simple method definition here of tokens. Let's cut that and bring it over. We'll save this file and bring it over to this separate file. So we have more space to add our handler logic. Let's define a request type that we expect this to receive. We expect to receive a JSON object with a refresh token property or field. So here it is defined in the JSON struct tag and it is required and we'll check that requirement in our bind data helper function that we created a long, long time ago. Basically this handles validation and makes sure we have all of the right fields. Let's now clear out this and add the method calls for our tokens handler. All right, I added a lot, so let's go through this relatively slowly. There are imports. All right, so we're going to create an empty struct of type tokens request, and then we'll use bind data to bind the incoming JSON request onto this rec. So we should have a refresh token in this request when all is said and done. And by refresh token, maybe I should have called this refresh token string, as we have various things called refresh tokens floating around the application. Let's extract our request context to use with our methods. We then call that validate refresh token that we just made. And that returns, again, this is why I should be clear with my naming, that returns a model refresh token, which has the sign string, the user ID, and the token ID extracted from the JTI claim of the JSON web token. We'll check for any errors and return those and return from the function or method if that's the case. We then get the up-to-date user. Remember I said we'd call the user services get method. And we do this by taking the user ID that was stored in that refresh token. Let's scroll up just a little here. We check for errors. 
And then we reach out to the new pair from user and we pass the refresh token as a string. This is where I said I probably could clear up some of my methods. Maybe this new pair from user should just take a UUID instead of a string to make clear that we're passing IDs, unique IDs around. We check for any errors there. And if all goes well, we're just going to return those tokens. And remember, because of the way in the last tutorial that we defined our model tokens here, our token pair, I should say, these are sort of those anonymous or embedded structs. And in them, we have the sign strings. They're called SS in the struct, but the JSON will be mapped to ID token and refresh token. Therefore, our handler should return an ID token and refresh token as our, I, as our API was already doing when we signed in or signed up users. So I think we are ready to give this a try. Let's change directories up one so that we can run our Docker compose up. Now we're going to run this and make some requests with Postman and also look at Redis. But please check out the repository if you would like to see some unit tests, which I will add. I'll update some for the token service and add a new one for the new method we created, the validate refresh token. I'll add a test for that and update the new pair from user test. And I'll add a test for this tokens handler. Anyhow, let's go to Postman. All right, I'm in Postman. Let's maybe sign in a user. These are some scripts I have for setting refresh tokens for us. But let's just sign in for now. Guy02. Excellent. Let's make sure that this refresh token is actually something that contains useful data. A quick way to do that is to paste the refresh token into jwt.io's debugger. So this refresh token is for a user with this user ID and the token ID. This JTI I keep mentioning, I didn't show it to you, but this is that token ID. And our tokens whitelist or our Redis tokens whitelist is the concatenation or the joining of the UID and the token ID or the JTI. So we should have, I don't know how to scroll back up. There we go. We should have this and then colon this. Let's go see if we have such a key inside of Redis. So this ends in 51DE and this one ends in 0DDF. I'm going to go to Redis Insight. I already have a connection here. So, oh, by the way, we're using Redis Insight. This is a downloadable Redis client. It opens in the browser. You can use this as an alternative option to the CLI and I just wanted to show that. So let's connect. I don't have any username or password. I'm running this locally so I can just connect directly. I click browser and I guess I need to extend this. So this, the colon is here. It ends in 251DE. Let's see if that was, yes, that's the UID. And the JTI ends in B0DD5. And that looks right. And it has a time to live. This is close to three days. Remember these tokens are set for three days. Now, if I refresh the token, I should get the same user ID token, and then a new refresh token ID here. Remember, we're revolving refresh tokens, and I mentioned this earlier. If we send in a request to the tokens API, not only should we get a new ID token, but we should get a new refresh token, and this key should be removed from Redis, meaning this is no longer a valid refresh token. That's a little confusing but I hope you can figure it out. We will get rid of this old token with the delete and then replace it with a new one so that the user doesn't have a bajillion refresh tokens still valid inside of our whitelist. And this is our whitelist. Let's now go to our tokens endpoint uh, here. And this takes a body of the refresh token. And Right now I had pasted in a, a, a refresh token, but remember when I signed in, I had this little test script. So I was setting the refresh token automatically as a variable called refresh token with this value. So I'm going to actually go here and use double braces and replace it with that variable I set. And if you hover over it, well, I thought I should be able to see the refresh token variable, but it should be correct. Let's send this. 
But before we send this, let's go back to Redis. And remember, our previous token had 0DD5 at the end. Let's now send the request. Interesting. I'll have to check my console to see what was wrong there. It looks like we had some sort of data binding error, some character E. So let's go back to Postman and see if there's something wrong here. Something is wrong that I need to figure out with this variable here. So I'm just going to delete this. Let's go back and sign in again. So remember our sign in body is here and we sign in. And if I copy and paste this refresh token, I guess with the quotation marks and go to tokens, we should now be able to get a new user refresh token here. Excellent. Now, if I send the request with this refresh token, we should get an error because it is no longer valid because we, when we called the refresh token root, we actually got a new refresh token here. And you can see it's different than this one. So let's send this again. And we get an error. To see this more fully, let's go back here to sign in again. Let's copy this refresh token. And let's paste it here. And let's send this request. Excellent. Let's maybe open this in the JSON web token debugger. So sorry for the confusion here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't think I need these quotes. I had a little error, but let's check this. This is the token ID that ends in 2DA7. So let's refresh this. There should be an easier way to refresh this, but I don't know how. And I have multiple of these because I've been signing in a lot. So let's see. That is a problem with this app. When you sign in, it doesn't get rid of previous refresh tokens. And that's because you could be signing in with multiple devices or browsers. So you could maybe add some secondary check to do that. All right, so here's our refresh token ending in 2DA7. And I just want to make sure that this gets deleted if we refresh with this token. Let's go back to Postman. So let's copy this token. And this should be the one relating to 2DE7. And I want to paste this. And let's send. Excellent. Let's go back to Redis. So here's 2DA7. And let's make sure that it is no longer there. So there's no token with 2DA7. So this just means that our previous token was deleted. Well, guys, that's all for today. Sorry for the little bit of sloppiness here in Postman. I need to figure out really what was going on with the refresh token variable, and I will fix that. Thanks for all those who are joining along. We're almost up to 100 subscribers, which isn't that much in YouTube. But go ahead, tell your nerdy friends to join and subscribe. Next time, we'll work on signing out a user from all devices, which means clearing all of their refresh tokens from the whitelist. And heck, while we're at it, let's look at this. You see that all of these tokens belong to the same user that starts with 0227. We're going to be able to delete all of those in one swoop. Anyway, take care. Hasta pronto. Ciao.